Hi, this is a demonstration showing how ProScore integrates with an external web server which is driven by a database. This is not the usual ProScore version. This is a special version that allows ProScore to integrate with an external database server. So this is in this example, on the right hand side we have like two computers which runs like a real time real time score result from a database. So those two are the web pages on an external web server. And here we have this computer running a special edition of ProScore. So we will start up ProScore and enter the snooker scoreboard. Now because this is a special edition, um, the players names and the best of frame will come from the, the server. So we have to get some information before we can connect to the server. So those information would be the table number and as well as the CID. So you get those two numbers from your organizer and enter here, the table's name here. So you enter the table number say number one and comma and then the CID which is a special number so let's say the CID is 26 so I enter one comma 26 and save and continue now ProScore is now looking for the server getting the information and put the players names here Okay, that's the player one's name, and that's the player's two name, as in here. So those are the two names, the player's names here. So that's successful. So we got the names from the server. And now we are going to synchronize the, the database to ProScore. Now, we are on frame number one so this is frame number one frame number one here okay so that's frame number one now we click the go match button now the clock is stopped so the frame has not started to start the frame we will click the C button to start the clock so I want to show you here that this is the database that we are running on and now this is uh, frame number one so the top row is frame number one and see how the time changes as we restart this frame number one and the clock will change and the frame status is currently zero but when we start the game when the frame begins that will change to number one so let's say we press the C button here. When we press the C button, the clock runs and the frame number will be updated to number one. Okay. You see here, this is now number one. Frame number is one and frame status is one, which is in progress. So you know that uh, this is now working. And when we enter a score, let's say um, we switch the player until a ball is potted. So let's say he pot a red ball. So I press number one for the red ball. And say he press number, I mean he pot number uh, a, a green ball, which is three pawns. So I got three pawns here. So we will be able to check um, from the scoreboard here, you can see this is now four points. And if we look at the database table, we will see that there is four on player number one. So player number one on frame one, four points, four points here, and four points here. And so on. So we can um, enter the score like this. 
Let's say um, you want to enter the break point, so you don't want to add a point after every port. You can enter the break directly. So you finish the break, and then you enter the total point. So for example, Mike, um, Michael has um, he made a break of 30 points. So you press B for the break entry and enter 30 and enter. So he got 30 points here. And the table will be updated with 30 points. You see here, that's 30 points. If I update this table, and you will get you will see that um, player number two get 30 points as well. And if I go to this frame here, frame number one should be um, Oh, it's not the right one. I think this is uh, is is that the right group? So you can see that um, it's not the right frame. I'm afraid, but anyway, um, it's not very important because what's important is that the table has been updated, and same as this result here. Okay, now um, when we finish the first frame, it's frame number one, and when there is a winner, okay, we have to end the frame. So to end the frame, we have to press W. And to confirm you end the frame, you press the green button, which is number three. So three, And one frame has been won by this person, so which is player number two. And you can see that the highest brick is here as well. The highest brick, 30, because he made a brick of 30. So now we are ready for frame number two. So just give me a second, I'll just, um, I'll just make it uh, frame number two. I hope I can do that from here. Um, number two. It's frame number two. So we will check the table here. We are going to start frame number two. So this second row is frame number two. The frame status is zero. And when I start the clock here, it will become number one. So I start the clock by clicking the C button. And the clock now runs. And let's update the table. Now that's the second frame. The frame status is number one in progress. Frame number is two. And this is the time, the start time of the frame. And that's the frame number and that's the, um, the frame status. So all good. So you carry on the game. And when a ball is ported, you enter the pawns. And this should update according to this scoreboard here. So you see 9, 9, okay. 1, 7, 8. And so on. So that will update as this is in progress. So this is uh, very simple. And as I said, you don't have to enter pawns after every port. You can enter the total break pawns when it's 
when the break is finished. So you press the B button, enter the total, which is say 15 points, and enter. So 15 has been added to 9 to give you 24. And um, so this is how you can enter the break directly. When the frame is finished, remember you should press the W button, W, to end the frame. And this is the highest break, 25 and 43. 25 and 43. That's the highest break and that's the score. So to confirm, you press the free key. That's the green button, so three. So frame two is finished. If we look at this table, frame number two will change to, num uh, the frame status will change to two after I update the table. So just give me a second. Okay, it's done. So frame number two is now finished, ended. So we can go on to frame number three. Frame number three, the status is zero. So when we start the clock here, if we start the clock, that's frame number three. And we will expect frame number three have a status of one. So this is frame number three and status is one in progress. So this is all I can tell you about this integration at the moment. And later I'll show you how to use the touchscreen to operate ProScore without using a keyboard. Thank you.